Welcome everyone, and in this video, we're going to be going over the tile renderer. Now, since we got the tiles up, we got our test tile, and we have the texture leading to our textures in here. And we don't have .png in this string of text, and well, we don't need it. That'll be handled in our tile renderer. So I am now going to create the tile renderer class. And it's going to have a few variables. And it's going to have a hash map. And this is going to have string and texture. And I'll call it tile textures. Um, what's the problem? Oh, okay. So this will hold all the textures for our tiles. So now we also have to create a model and the model will be a static model it'll be the default for a tile it'll just be a square and it will be the exact same as what we have here in the main it'll be the exact same so now we can create our constructor And I'm going to go ahead and initialize our hash map. And I'm going to copy over our model from the main class. And it's going to be put in the constructor of tile renderer. And I'm just going to get rid of model here. And there, that should be almost everything. But back in the tiles, we created this array of tiles for each ID here. And basically, we're going to have to iterate through it and add all the textures into this hash map here. So four and we'll have an int of i which will be set to zero. I is less than tiles dot tile or sorry tile dot tiles dot length i plus plus And now we're going to have to test something. So if our hash map here of textures, tile textures was, yeah, tile textures. If tile textures contains key and we'll do tile dot tiles at I dot get texture. And that'll return the string of the texture. And that's the reason why we don't have .png here is so the texture name is the key for the texture. And then make sure you have the exclamation mark here. So it'll act so that way if it's not there, we'll add it. So we can go ahead and put tile.tiles at i.getTexture and the value is a new texture. I'll actually put this in its own string so that way I don't have to call the same function twice.
put it right there. Okay, so the new texture will be text plus dot png. And that will be our texture. Okay, so now that we've done this, we'll need a new method, and this will be public void render tile. And we'll take a byte of ID, and we'll have we'll have an an integer for the x and y position. We're going to need a shader, and we'll have a matrix for F of the world, and our camera. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. So now that we have all of this in here, the first thing we have to do is bind the shader. And now we get the texture. So to get the texture, we'll use if the tiles or tile textures contains key of tile dot tiles at ID, then we can bind that. I'm sorry, tile tiles at ID dot get texture. Then it'll check and see if that's there, and if it is, well, we can bind that texture. So I'm just going to write the same thing out, except tile textures dot get, and we'll pass in the same thing, tile tiles at ID get texture. And then at the end of this, we'll do dot bind zero. And this tests if the texture is there. And then if it if it's there, we bind the texture. So now that the texture has been binded, we need a matrix for the tile itself. So I'll call this matrix tile position. And this will only hold the position of the tile. And this will equal to a new matrix for F. And we'll translate this with a new vector 3F. And we'll do X times 2 and Y times 2 and 0. Now, we have x times 2 because the scale of our matrix, the scale actually scales it in two directions on the x, two directions on the y, and two directions on the z, which we're not using the z. So we use times 2 because the position is going to be the x times the scale of our of our tile here this will make more sense once we get into the world yeah it might it might sound confusing now but once we get to the world class it'll sound it'll it'll make more sense and now that'll that'll be it 
we'll just set the position of the tile through that. That's it. And now we got to create a new matrix, and I'll call this target. And essentially, this target here is going to be tile position multiplied with world with camera's projection as well. So what we'll do is we'll do cam dot get projection dot multiply and we'll multiply it with our world and we'll put this into target so here we get the projection from our camera and we're multiplying this with world and we're putting all those values into target and if we didn't have this there, it'll actually change the camera's projection multiplied with the world. So we don't, we don't want that to happen. So we put it into target. And now we got to multiply target with tile position. So we get our projection with the world matrix and we multiply that with the tile position and then this will put our tile in the correct spot. So now all we have to do is render the model. And that should be it for the tile renderer. Now we can test this. So in the main, I'm going to comment out our model, model here. And I'm going to comment this out as well. Oh, that's one thing we forgot. We, got, we forgot to set the uniforms. So go back in the tile renderer. I'm sorry. And in our shader, our fragment shader, our uniform for the texture is called sampler. So with our shader class, before we render the model, we'll use shader.setUniform. And the string name was sampler. And we'll set this to zero because we, we bind the texture to the first sampler, which is zero. And we're going to want to use this sampler. And the last variable that we have to set is projection. And this is actually quite simple. It's just shader set uniform with our projection. And we use target. because target is the matrix we want to use. It has everything that we have put into it from the math. All right, now this should work. I'm surprised I forgot that. So now I'm just going to comment everything out here. And I'm going to create our new tile renderer here. So we'll create a tile renderer. I'll call this tile tiles. I'll just call it tiles equals a new tile renderer. And don't forget to import it. And now we come down to render our first tile. But before we do that, we need to create a matrix. So our scale here, will change this up a bit. So I'm going to set the position to zero and I'm going to set the scale to 
I'll go with 16. So this way, the tile will actually be 32 by 32. It's weird. Yeah, I know. I'll go over more on this in the world because uh, this video is getting a bit too long. And now, hold on, what was the name of that? It's scale. Okay. So now we can render our tile. And I'll render two tiles. So I'll create the for loop for two tiles. You don't need a for loop. I'll actually create it for eight tiles. Why not? And we'll use tiles dot render tile. And in our tiles, in our tile class, we have our test tile set to zero. So we'll have this as zero. I'll use I for the X and zero for the Y. The shaders, our shader object, the world matrix will be scale and our camera. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, so there is actually two bugs. One is that we weren't testing if the tile was null in the tile renderer in the tile renderer. So when we add the textures, make sure you test if tiles is not equal to null before we test for the texture. Otherwise you're going to get a null pointer exception. And for the IIO exception where it can't read the input file, I went ahead and added this inside the texture class because it's the root folder of our textures, you know. That way we don't have to add this all the time for when we create a texture outside of the outside of the tile renderer. And now with all that, it should show our tiles. So another thing is I'll add one more for loop. We'll go down about four. And I'll replace the Y component to this function with J. And now we should have a little world getting in here. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. This tutorial may have seen seemed all over the place, but to me it did anyways. And I'll see you when we get on with the world class.